Our scripture reading today is from the book of Luke, um, chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. And that's found on page 72 in your pew Bible if you want to follow along. <clears throat> he, um, he was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church. So happy to see all of you this morning and, and that you could come back out of your air-conditioned shell, get in your car, flip on that air conditioner, right? Get to church, get out. But actually, it's a pretty great day today. I think the weather's going to be nice, and I'm hoping to go on a bike ride this afternoon with my family. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Talking to God is important. Would we all agree with that? Yeah, we talk to God. Most of us talk to God every day. It's, it's really important. And when we come to God in prayer we as Christians, then we become engaged and our spiritual life is more attuned to the world around us and our relationships and with humanity. It is all becomes more meaningful when we are sharing prayer with our creator. Through prayer, we are sharing commonality with others because we're all talking to God, whether we're young, middle, young at heart. But when we look at today's culture, it is alarming to find out that prayer is on the downturn, and not surprisingly, anxiety and stress are on the uptick. Oftentimes, to seek peace or refuge, we turn to our phones, we turn to social media, we turn to our television, or if you're old school, you turn to gossip around the coffee table. We do whatever it takes to self-heal ourselves and relieve ourselves from stress that we feel instead of talking to God. The American Psychological Society Association, uh, each November, they take a stress test of America. And I find it ironic that they always take this test right before Christmas season. So in November, they will take this test and they will survey um, Americans and to report their experience on stress. Um, at, and all, um, those that reported experiencing at least one stress symptom a month, everyone said that. 45% reported lying awake at night. 36% reported feeling nervous or anxious. 35% reported irritability or anger. And 34% reported fatigue due to stress. Illness was not the only factor that was found that stress causes, or causes stress. 
Social injustice, unemployment, broken relationships were also categories that cause stress. All create anxiety and a need to release that anxiety, a need for relief. So it would not be a stretch to say that we all yearn for some peace in our lives. Wouldn't it be great to find something that would give us peace? Well, then let's look at today's scripture. We are in Luke chapter 11. The disciples have been witnessing Jesus praying. They've been watching him pray. And they ask him to teach them how to pray like he did. He does. What is important to remember, and I said this to the children in the children's time, is that all the disciples knew how to pray. They were raised in the Jewish faith. But Jesus was praying not just in a, a ceremonial decorum. I said this prayer, I said this prayer, I said this prayer. But in a way that he actually was communicating with God. Prayer done correctly offers us the greatest peace. Prayer is communion. It's a relationship with God. It offers us an opportunity to become closer to our creator. And in the process, we get farther away from that anxiety and that stress that we are experiencing. We get farther away from loneliness. We get farther away from the, the yearning to have our loved ones that we have lost be with us. We are then comforted by our Lord. Today's gospel lesson in Jesus' teaching is about prayer. It's all about prayer. And the Lord's Prayer is not actually Jesus praying, but it is an outline that he teaches his disciples how to pray. So sometimes we pastors like to call it the disciples' prayer. It's how we teach prayer, to have greater communion with God. And there are three things that we can learn from today's text just by looking at the prayer. Jesus teaches us how to talk to God. He teaches us how to pray with persistence. And finally, he teaches us that God will provide for our needs. Reading again, let's look at this and break it down into the two essential parts of the Lord's Prayer. First, in a series of three petitions, which are call, calling our attention to God's greatness. The last three uh, call our attention to our needs, uh, the things that we want, right? When we talked about in the children's time, we pray for what we want. But the first three petitions are identifying who our God is. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Three things right there. Father, he identifies him. Hallowed be thy name. He is greater than no other. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom, your will be done on this earth. What I like best about this prayer, though, right off the bat, is Jesus says, you can address him like I do. You can call him Father, too. This is so striking because he immediately says, you two can have the same relationship as I do and say, Father. Speaker Joyce Myers said that before she preached on the Lord's Prayer, she had no good image of what a loving father was like because she was abused as a child. It was life-changing for her, though, that through the Lord's Prayer, she found out that when you join Jesus and call God Father, you now have a father who loves you. A father who has your back and who will fight for you and listen to you honestly with love and patience. For those of us who have had great fathers, we can give thanks for both our earthly father and our father who is in heaven. But isn't it awesome that Jesus offers us that relationship with God simply by saying at the beginning of the prayer, Father. Have you ever been invited to someone's home and you are welcomed like you are one of the family? Have you ever ha had that happen to you? Hey, stop over. And you get there and you are just like welcomed in. And, and before you know it, you're uh, sharing this amazing family experience and maybe you're trying some something that they make, some food that they have that they love, and they're sharing it with you because they, they're, they're sharing their love with you. They're sharing the wonderful food and experience and family traditions. And you're being made to feel like one of them. 
call him father and honor him. Next, hollow God is to believe that he is good in good character and he knows what he needs what you need. He wants the best for you. He knows everything about you. Hallowed be thy name. When I was little, I would say hollow like an empty tube. And my dad would always correct me and say, hello, hello, hello. I always wondered what that meant. And to truly hold someone as honorable and true is to hollow them. It's a place of great honor. Thy kingdom come. Oftentimes we forget that our purpose here on earth is not only to live our lives, but to further the kingdom of God. Three Three things in that very short first section of your scripture. We jump into the Lord's prayer oftentimes and we plow through those first three petitions, forgetting that our prayers are not just for our needs. We need to slow down, give thanks, honor the one who has created us, and offer his will, his kingdom come. My heart is so full of happiness when I say that verse, thy kingdom come. Is where my father and his people will be able to come together with all that Jesus has done for us. And it will be realized, remembering that Jesus descended into earth, cast out demons, died on a cross, and on his way back to heaven gave us an advocate, the Holy Spirit. Give thanks for this God, this trinity. Three and one, to hear our prayers. What a team we have. Talk about prayer team. We have it in God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus literally could have ended it there. But no, in this scripture, he gives us time to ask for things to sustain us. What a loving God we have. Teach us how to pray. He gives us how to honor our Lord, our Father in heaven. And then he says, what are your needs? The second part of the Lord's prayer gets to our needs. There we are fed. We are given our daily bread. We are forgiven. We forgive those of sinful nature who have sinned against us. And we are saved from evil. Isn't it good to know that we can seek redemption and renewal by the the Lord's prayer? Friends, the Lord's Prayer is short, and it's simple, but it's powerful, so powerful. And I'm, I'm thankful that the scripture was given today in the lectionary that we can offer this. Thank you, Jesus, for offering us this prayer. And yet, our scripture doesn't end there, does it? There's a little section down at the bottom, a little bit more that he says. Jesus said, as he shared this parable, suppose you have a friend and you go to them at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine is on a journey, has come, and I have no food for him. And suppose one, in, one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked. And my children are already in bed. I have no food to offer him. And suppose... He says, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children are, are in bed and I can't give, get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks on the door, it will be open. What is he talking about? Are we supposed to be wrong for waking up our neighbor to go get some loaves? In the middle of the night, are we supposed to be mad at our neighbor who doesn't want to get out of bed and get us that food for our visitor? Jesus is telling us, dare to be shameless in your prayers. To keep bringing our needs and hopes to your heavenly Father. Because Jesus told us to do so. Trusting in God's purpose for us. Not everything that happens is God's will. But we can affirm from St. Paul, 
all things, all, in all things, God works for good for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose, Romans 8, 28. We must hold on to this hope and continue to speak to God, even when things aren't going our way, and it seems our knocking at that door isn't being answered. We need to keep on praying. As I told you, this scripture lesson has three messages. It teaches us how to talk to God. It teaches us the importance of persistence of prayer. And then finally, God will provide. That is the, the answer in this text here. Because he is strong and he is loving. This last point, I think many Christians forget about. Some of us don't talk to God much, do we? I don't know why. Maybe we are shameful of how we have been acting and we're afraid to come to him. The guilt is starting to build up in us, and our prayer life has been ab absent. And sometimes it's overwhelming for people, and they're like, when, where do I start with God? What should I do? You must just, at this point, if you learn anything from today's lesson, is lean into God. He's not pushing you away. You're pushing him away. Lean into him and tell God, I'm in need. I love you, Lord. I've done a lot of bad things. My prayer life has been terrible. I've been blaming it on the heat outside. Lord, I'm leaning into you now, and I'm praying to you, God. And I'm giving thanks for you, and, and thanks for my friends, and asking for healing of those that are suffering. Our creator is there to give you what you need, so stop worrying. I'm going to turn to Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Uh, when I was studying this text, I was reading from the NIV, so it might sound a little different. I'd like you to close your eyes and listen to this text. Just close your eyes. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by your worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon, in all his great splendor, was dressed like the one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow and then thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. Open your eyes. Don't worry. Prayer is the answer. Give time to pray to your Lord. Use the Lord's Prayer as an outline. Practice by first giving thanks to your Creator. Call on Him. Call Him Father. Pray for His love and the message that He gives. That it will be spread throughout the world in His kingdom. Through you, the hands and feet, the missionaries. Thy kingdom come. And turn to Him for your needs and ask for forgiveness. And leave the worry to him, to him, and continue to talk to him anytime, anywhere. 
just pray. Amen.